Hi, I'm Sean Harkness with Walden Guitars, and this is my very favorite Walden guitar, the G2070 RCE. And what we're going to talk about today is care and feeding of these beautiful instruments. Um, so what I'm going to do is do a, a, a basic restringing and talk about the different things that I'm looking at, thinking about, and working on while I'm doing a restring. Um, using my favorite strings, DR Veritas strings. These are cool because they are coated to last longer, but it's just the core that's coated. So on the outside, it just feels like a regular natural string. You don't even think about it. Um, and they do last a very long time. Especially, I play a lot. I beat the hell out of these things. Um, and all of this holds up really well. So we'll start with, of course, you got to take the strings off. Now, even before you do that, why do you change strings? Why would you have to do that? Um, I will rub my finger underneath the thinnest of the wound strings, in this case the G, and see, you can feel little bumps underneath there where the strings are wearing on the frets. Um, that's usually the first sign that something needs to change. Um, if, obviously, if you see they're oxidizing or things are icky, then that's the choice. But these look like perfectly good strings. Just when I do this, ah, uh, okay, yeah, I need, I should change. So that's what made me come to the bench to begin with. <clears throat> um, so let me take the strings off and then we'll talk about things more. So taking the pins out of the bridge, I have found there's so many little gadgets and things that people try to sell you. My favorite are still these old string winders. They're cheap and easy to find, and they got a little notch in the bottom there. They're just the right size shape. Always works. Anyway. You get a couple things to make fast film out of. Gummy. Okay, so just starting from the top and working our way down without the strings on, here are the things that I think about and look for. So first, the tuning pegs themselves, because um, over time, wood ever so slowly contracts, metal does not. So that means that sometimes things where metal meets wood, uh, the fitting might loosen over time. And I just go to check and see, you know, are these as tight as they can be? And there's like a millimeter of movement there, but ma making sure that these are snug, not too tight, but snug. Um, it's just one of the little things you can do to ensure that you'll always be in tune. Okay, those are good. Um, might clean off the dusty stuff in between. So it's a happy headstock. And now um, I will look, we'll talk about nut adjustment once the strings are on. Um, I know this one's good, but we'll talk about how to make it good. Uh, the fingerboard itself, I don't know if you can see in the camera, you know, you can see where my fingers have been. Um, and even with clean hands, there's just, there's oils and residues and enzymes and acids and things that'll go onto the fingerboard. So I'll use some 
four zero steel wool. It's got hashtag number sign four zero. It's the finest you can get in a hardware store, cheap. And just give the fingerboard a gentle scrub. We'll shine up the frets a little bit and get the gudge off of the, the wood. So it's just nice, clean wood. If you, you're working on somebody else's guitar and you really care, it might be a good idea to put a little bit of masking tape on either side so you don't you know, scratch the surface. I'm very careful, and this is my guitar, so I'm not gonna worry about it right now. Just saying. Nice and clean. And now here's another step that I've, I have already done, so this doesn't need to be done right now, is to put a little bit of oil, a mineral-based oil, not anything organic, no matter what anybody says. If it's organic, it will rot. It will go rancid inside the cells of your precious wood. You just don't want that to happen. No, it doesn't matter how expensive the lemon oil is or the avocado or how rare, it doesn't matter. If it's organic, it will rot. And mineral oil does not rot. So any, I use three in one household oil. I've been using this for 30 years, works great. WD, no, not WD-40, because that's actually a lubricant, don't use that. But uh, 40 weight um, engine oil would be fine. We used to get these fancy little uh, bottles of clarinet bore oil um, they use on fine ebonies, whatever, just as long as it's mineral so that it doesn't rot. And what I'd usually do is put a little stripe on and just rub it in and let it sit there for 10, 15 minutes so that it absorbs into the pores of the wood going underneath the frets and all those sensitive areas where just to protect the wood from your fingers or a beer stain or anything like that. You might want to put some on the, uh, on the bridge as well, just to condition the wood and protect it from any harmful elements. And I would let that sit there for a while. And then with your 4-0 steel wool, polish it in just a little bit more. Now, and then use a nice clean cloth of some kind. Well, do I have a nice clean cloth? Thank you. And get all of that stuff off of there because you don't want any excess oils in your life. Uh, there. So now that's a nicely conditioned, clean fingerboard and bridge and you know get out any dusts or anything that's accumulated under here that's hard to get to and the strings are on polishing you can do that but uh i'm talking about the business section here today and and yeah make sure that uh your bridge saddle fits in nicely without any stuff around it we're ready to put on a fresh set of strings, yeah? That's that's basically it for just a basic restringing. Um, I'm not checking action height here at the bridge. We're assuming that that's already good. Um, I put little slots in here that I do myself. Uh, your local technician might do it for you to make sure that the string action is uh, is pulling down on the saddle so that the pickup works well and it's getting a nice even tone. There are things like that, but we're not worrying about those things today. We're just restringing. So here it goes. With the DR coated strings on the top two plain strings, they give us a choice of the coated string or a plain string. It's probably hard to see. You know, one has a, a, a like a goldish color. That's the one with the coating, um, and it's your choice. Try them both. See which one you like better. I'm going to go with the coated string. Why not? Keep the other one as a spare. Eh? Ah. And here we go. As I'm putting this in, what you want to do with the pin is get the string inside the hole, put the pin in, 
and pull it up so that it's lodged just inside of the pin. Like you don't want it, ah, it's a feel thing and it's hard to describe using words, but uh, you'll know it when you push it in there and you can push the pin all the way in and the string comes all the way up to be nice and snug with it. Don't be afraid to get in there and like give it up a little bit. Here's another one. I'm going to select the coated string. There we go. Did that one? Yeah, there we go. There we go. So, I'm going to keep these spares in my case, just in case something breaks on a gig, you never know. <laughs> now, this is the, the important part. I know there are a number of um, approaches to doing this, I'm gonna show you mine that I learned from a master. And I used to argue with him about it when he was first telling me. And he said, you're working in my shop, you're going to do it my way. I said, okay. 30 years later, I'm still doing it this way. The logic is that you, when you're putting the strings on the post, there should be just the right amount of mass and string coils so that the friction keeps it on the post don't want to cross strings some people tie them or put this little notch in there you're asking for a broken string at the headstock when you do that because there's tension on there so not a good idea if you have too much winding um, it's just going to keep slipping and going out of tune it's messy if you don't have enough winding there's not enough to hold it there uh, and it could slip out um, so it has to there's kind of a zen balance there and you don't want it to twist while you're putting it on because again, you're asking for trouble. So this seems to be the best way around this is to pull it not too tight, but just tension and give it a wrap on the post. And with the low E string, I just go around kind of once and then put it through, make, line up the hole so it's in a convenient place for you, no problem. That looks good and put it through the peg, pull it as tight as you can here, and then pull the rest of the way from here so that it snugs up on the post as you're tuning it kind of almost to pitch. Good enough for now. To hold itself there, I'll give it a little tug here and a little tug there, maybe a little tug in the middle, not too much, you don't wanna break it just to help it settle in. You'll notice you get a few of those before it, you know. All right. And then we'll cut off the excess and go on to the next string. This one, I'll give it another half or more of a wind. So maybe I'll go around kind of one and a half times so that you know the diameter of the string is getting smaller so you can get away with a little more wind on the peg you know, so kind of one one and a half two and a half three four five ish you know you'll see which with whatever kind of strings you're using that's the thought process How are you doing? You enjoying this so far? Yeah, 
kind of two and a half ish. So then when, it, when this process is done and you look at each peg, even though there's only kind of one and a half, two and a half, three and a half, et cetera, it's about the same thickness of string that ends up being on the peg. That Goldilocks, not too little, not too much, just right. <laughs> and now remember, <clears throat> as you're going this way, the diameters get smaller and smaller. The G string especially has the thinnest diameter of all the strings on the guitar. So you don't want to yank on this one too hard. This one's going to be in the most danger of breaking, either now or in hard playing. There's the hole. I can't see. There it is. Nope, it's got to come out on top of the coil on the other side. There we go. Actually, it's better. Actually, can you put this one this way? Because it's this one this far. way. It's too far. The neck is too far. Oh, can I do it on the other side? No. <laughs> I can move it closer, but okay, that's, that's about it. Okay. are starting to lose their their love yeah that works <laughs> that's how that goes ah and then it's about an eve ish But anyway, I'm going to get it close, and I'll take a look. Um, <laughs> well. There is a tuner on the side of this thing, and I could probably use it. Let's see. Let's see? the day before a gig that would be best but anyway so it's at least really close to tuning it there at tension which is what I wanted to get to right now so this is the last thing that I always look for um, if you press down the strings what just behind this very top fret and the very first fret 
so that now the string is visible from the center of that fret to the center of that fret. And look at the space between the bottom of the string and the fret around here, around frets eight or nine, around C. Um, and it should be, I mean, it, again, personal preference. Some people want that flat, almost touching. Some people want it the thickness of, say, a medium guitar pick. Um, that's what I like. I like a little bit of relief. There has to be some, or else your frets will go out. And I check the adjustment of the truss rod. And this is, right now, perfect, exactly where I left it last time. So I don't need to change it. But if I did, there's this groovy little tool that comes in your case. And gently and carefully, you go in here, and you can feel where the Allen key fits into the, the, uh, the socket there. And you can either tighten it that way, never more than a quarter turn at a time, and then go back and look, or loosen it, same. You know, just small adjustments make a big difference. I mean, these things come from the factory pre-adjusted and they're in great condition, but over time, wood moves, you know. Um, humidity, dryness, heat, cold, playing, vibration, age of wood, all these things affect how the wood behaves and it, it does behave, you know, whereas the metal doesn't, you know, or it gets worn, but the wood, over time she moves yeah and we need to do this it's, uh, and especially if you have you go from a medium gauge set of strings to light gauge for instance or whatever the tension on the neck changes so there are many things that would affect this you want to learn how to do it if you're not comfortable with it let your local professional do it that's fine but that's the concept that the strings are pulling the neck this way so inside there's a rod that's pulling the neck against that and we can adjust the tension of that rod so that there's a nice even balance of string tension versus neck tension. And uh, you want it to be nice and smooth and playable as this one is. And we listen. That's all for today, for care and feeding of an acoustic guitar. Once again, I'm Sean Harkness with Walden. Thanks for listening. Hope to see you again soon. Just tell me when. Hi, Dozo. Ah, go We said landscape. Hi, Dozo. Hi, I'm Sean Harkness, and uh, this is my favorite Walden guitar. The, uh, what are the actual numbers here? What do they call it? Yeah, start again, okay? 2070 RC, I should know that. <laughs> I helped design the fucking thing. Okay, Go ahead. start again. Mm -hmm. Hi, I'm Sean Harkness with Walden Guitars, and this is my very favorite uh, G2070 RCE. <coughs> a model I actually helped design a little bit way back in the idea stages. It's absolutely everything I love about an acoustic guitar, me personally. It's very personal, it's not for everybody. I like a cedar top, mahogany back and sides, 25 and a half inch scale, uh, nice uh, unadorned classic fingerboard, etc. There's so many things. Without getting into all that, what we're here for today, in fact, 
scratch all that, start again.